everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about keeping alocasia and colocasia as indoor plants, what they like, what they don't like, and how to resolve any issues you might currently have going on with them. So let's get into it. So there's loads of gorgeous types of alocasia, many of which that can grow to be huge, like this one here, meaning that they're commonly referred to as elephant ear plants. First off, I just want to say that these plants are toxic, so if you've got small children or pets that are prone to getting involved with your plants, then this is definitely something to bear in mind. All alocasias are fairly high light plants and are going to do best in what's known as bright indirect light. Bright and direct light basically just means an area that receives lots of natural bright light, but not too much direct sun. Although they love bright light, they're quite sensitive plants and too much exposure to direct sun is going to cause their leaves to burn. Where I am in the UK, the sun in the morning and evenings tends to be really quite gentle, so a few hours of this every day isn't going to do them any harm, but what you've got to watch out for is when the sun's at its highest, because then it can be really, really harsh. These plants, unlike some others, are really not very adaptable when it comes to light. Some house plants can learn to adjust and tolerate lower light levels, but from my experience, both alocasia and colocasia are going to start to look pretty unhappy fairly quickly if they're not receiving enough light. They can do absolutely fine under grow lights if your house doesn't receive much natural light, but if you're undercutting what they need, they're gonna to start to look quite thin and stretched and probably drop some leaves to try and conserve their energy. It's so important to make sure that you're keeping their leaves clean. If you let dust and dirt build up, it's gonna essentially stop them absorbing all the light that they need and pretty much be the same as keeping them in lower light conditions. For the ones with smoother, thinner leaves like my Caladora here, I'll just take either a microfiber cloth or a damp sponge and give her a really good wipe down. However, for varieties such as black velvet that have thicker, velvety leaves, it's better just to dust them because they really don't like their leaves getting wet. When kept in the right conditions, these plants can be really, really fast growing, but they do tend to chase the light quite quickly, so it's just important to turn them regularly so they can absorb equal amounts of light from all angles. If you don't do this, you'll probably start to notice the growth of your plant becoming quite lopsided or even dying off on the side that the light isn't able to properly reach. When it comes to watering, again, alocasias can be quite fussy. They really like their soil to be kept evenly moist, but not saturated or soggy, and they can be really prone to issues caused by overwatering. I personally don't have any kind of watering schedule for any of my plants. I simply just go off how the soil feels, depending on what each of them likes or doesn't like. With these ones, I tend to wait until the surface layer of soils had time to dry out slightly before I water them again, just to make sure I'm not overdoing it. As I bang on about in pretty much all of my videos, underwatering is always better than overwatering. That is just simply because it's usually so much easier to save a plant that's been given too little as opposed to too much. So if you're in any doubt, less is more. That being said, when you do come to water, it's really important to thoroughly soak the soil through, otherwise the whole root system won't be targeted and this can lead to issues. I'm really not a believer in light watering. Making sure you use a pot with good drainage is also key, otherwise water is going to essentially collect around the roots of your plant and cause them to start rotting and root rot is the biggest killer in houseplants. I'll always keep my plants in their nursery pots and just treat the pretty pots like pot covers so that then I can take my plants out, water them, make sure they're properly properly drained and then pop them back into their pretty pots. Also on that note, you want to make sure that they're in a really good quality soil. You want to look for something that provides really good drainage, but also retains moisture really well without becoming too dense and compact. I'll always mix some coconut core, perlite and orchid bark into my soil for these ones. Depending on whereabouts you live, alocasia and colocasia can sometimes be a little bit sensitive to the chemicals and minerals found in tap water, particularly if you live in a town or a city or something like that where the water's much harder. So if you are having issues, I would advise probably switching to distilled water or even rainwater. It's free. Use rainwater. You can also just let your tap water sit out for 12 hours or so before you water your plants with it so that some of the chemicals have time to evaporate. 
quite often over the darker winter months, you'll notice these plants start to go through a bit of a dormancy period where their growth will slow right down and they might lose a few leaves. This is totally normal and just part of the life cycle of the plant. They'll usually jump back into action during the growing season, which is the spring and summer months. During growing season, I would highly recommend adding a fertilizer into your watering routine, just because it helps to encourage and support any new and existing growth. As I've said before, if you've never fertilised your plant before, I would just recommend easing them into it quite gently. So starting with less than it says and gradually building it up over time. Just because if your plant isn't used to this sudden boost of nutrients, it can send them into shock and potentially cause something called fertiliser burn. Fertiliser burn affects the roots of your plant and causes horrible dark yellowy kind of burn marks on your plant's leaves. It can also be caused by giving your plants too much fertiliser or fertilising them when they don't need it. So make sure you always read the instructions on your fertilizer bottle and do your research before just guessing. I'll always fertilize my alocasias more or less every other time I water them during the growing season and then just completely lay off the fertilizer during the winter months. You can also make your own fertilizer. I made a video a while back on some DIY fertilizer recipes so if anyone's interested I'll link that video in the description box below. Another thing that's really important in order to keep these plants happy is humidity. It's honestly really hard to go overboard with humidity for these ones because they just lap it up and it keeps them really happy. I would say about a minimum of 60% humidity would be, would be minimum. But yeah, any extra, as I say, will just help keep them happy, healthy, all the good things. Oh God, it's getting to that time where my mind starts to go and I have to be like, no, Claire, focus on the camera. Right onwards. The best way to increase the humidity is obviously by investing in a humidifier, but pebble trays can also get the job done too. Also grouping together lots of plants in one area can be a really brilliant way to naturally increase the humidity. If they're not receiving enough humidity, you'll often notice the edges and tips of the leaves start to become quite dry and damaged. New growth as well can be really badly affected because it often gets stuck and can't unfurl properly, meaning that when it does, it's often damaged. So yes, crank up the humidity. When it comes to temperature, these ones like it fairly warm. Anywhere between about 18 and 28 degrees Celsius will be good for them. Just make sure that the temperature remains quite steady so that it's not constantly fluctuating because then that means they will have to be continuously adjusting. If it's too cold, you'll probably notice their growth slow right down. Even if they're getting all the light and nutrients they need, the temperature really does affect them. Another thing to bear in mind is that especially during the winter months, when we put the central heating on or fan heaters or anything like that, it's going to drain so much humidity from the air. So that is the time to be upping the humidity even more. Alocasia and colocasia are also ridiculously sensitive to cold drafts and it can cause issues with them fairly quickly. So just make sure you don't put them right next to an air vent or a draft door or window or anything like that. Some other just kind of general things to say about this plant is that so often people will really start to worry when they see the leaves start to yellow and fall off. It's a really common cycle with these plants and absolutely nothing to worry about. It's totally normal. It will usually just happen when the plants either produced a new little baby leaf or is getting ready to produce new growth just so that it can kind of conserve its energy and focus it on the new growth and not an old mother leaf. For example, with my big one here, you can see it's just pushed out a new little baby leaf. I know just from having this plant for a while and I know how it works, that it will probably let go of this leaf in the next few weeks or so, just because it was the kind of original mother leaf and it doesn't need it anymore. Same as this big one up here, which although it will be sad, I know they will come back eventually. So yeah, it does seem to happen more over winter, but again, they need their energy more over the winter months. So that kind of makes sense. The same thing here with my alocasia black velvet. You can kind of see this big leaf here. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it is starting to yellow and I'm pretty sure it's on its way out, which is a shame, but I did try to pollinate her recently. You can see she's got two little spades here. I did try to pollinate her and it was after the pollination process that this started to happen. So I'm hoping that is because it's working and the plant just needs energy for that right now. But if not, if not, I'm hoping it's because she's got a lovely, lovely new leaf on the way. So yeah, we will wait and see, but it is just part of the cycle of the plant. Alocasias are also unfortunately quite prone to pests. I would say probably spider mites and thrips are the ones that tend to affect them the most. And if you don't catch them and treat them early, they can bring down your plants pretty quickly. I just try to check my plants as regularly as I possibly can for any abnormalities, either sticky residue, sandy residue, 
pests themselves, webbing, anything like that. If I see anything that doesn't look normal, I will make sure to isolate that plant immediately so that it doesn't risk getting into the rest of my collection. If you suspect that your plant might have pests, I have made some videos on treating this before, but as I say, the most important thing is to make sure you isolate that plant. Hello. <laughs> oh no. Hi. You isolate that plant well, oh my god, you only well away from your other plants so that it isn't gonna spread. Don't you bite me. Another thing to say is that if your alocasia does start to go downhill and you either have to chop it right back or it naturally loses all its leaves, don't give up hope. So long as it hasn't rotted, alocasia and colocasia can actually be stored and grown back from tubers, which are basically just their little nutrient energy reserves. I had spider mites really, really badly a few years back and I had to completely chop back my alocasia stingray and I did just that. I stored the tubers, replanted them in spring and she bounced back really, really well and is now a beautiful, full, healthy plant again. I'm gonna end this video here just because I've realized that it's got pitch black dark in the time that I've been filming this and I'm looking a little bit burned out on the screen. But if anybody's got any questions, feel free to drop me a comment down below and I'll do my best to help. I really hope this video was useful. If it was, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video.